Okay, I thought uh, a few people were suggesting they needed some help getting started on Lab 4, the Maze Lab. And so I thought uh, I'd kind of jump in. And this time, instead of being all prepared, I'm going to just wing it. <laughs> so if I screw up, uh, maybe that will be helpful to you as you uh, spot some, uh, some ways that I'm going to try to get out of trouble. But I don't guarantee I'll get them all I'll, I'll, fi I'll resolve everything in 15 minutes, which is what I try to limit these, uh, these videos to. So first of all, you'll notice if you go to the Lab 4 uh, description, it's going to take you to a GitHub page. And of course, you're going to then uh, be able to uh, auto-grade things in, the, in this window, but uh, we're not going to do that right now. So if you go ahead and go to the GitHub page, Again, it's going to talk about this exploring the 3D maze thing, and I would suggest you watch this video. It should be very helpful. The idea is you've got a, uh, a three-dimensional uh, storage facility that has 10 by 10 by 10 cells, and you have to try to explore this and find a way from one corner to the other corner. And so um, you're going to uh, you want to import a maze from a file and you have to be able to determine if it's a valid maze. Um, you have to figure out if there are the maze is solvable and uh, namely if there is a path from point zero 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 down to 444 and uh, doesn't uh, so anyway, d dri divers can only move up, down, left, right, forward, and backwards. One cell at a time, they can't do diagonals, so that makes your job a little bit easier. Uh, you'll also have some opportunity to test for unsolvable mazes, and uh, then you're supposed to be able to generate random mazes. Okay? So uh, uh, you should go ahead and put in a .h and a .cpp every time you create a class, and this is kind of a visualization of what you're going to do. You can imagine coming up in one corner and finding your way through the middle and going out the other corner. I would suggest that you uh, create uh, some debug information that will help you visualize what your uh, maze looks like and where you are along the way. So <clears throat> with that, let's go ahead and get started. Here's the uh, the files that you'll need to work on so we can go ahead and clone that uh, repository. It will mostly have this Pathfinder interface and then all of the test files and main.cpp. So it, the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and uh, do a git clone on that repository. And that will go ahead and give us this lab for maze thing. And inside of here, there's a bunch of mazes. You're going to have this Pathfinder interface that you're going to have to inherit from, and then you're going to go, have to go ahead and implement these things. Okay. Now, some of them are uh, pretty straightforward, like imp importing the maze and creating a random maze. Uh, but the solve maze is really the recursive part that I really want you to focus on. So what I'd like to do is try to give you some help on, uh, so you're not spending a whole lot of time on uh, the other parts of the lab, which are really not um, as important. So if you uh, Notice there's a few resources that are going to be very uh, effective for you. The first one is I would read the book. <laughs> and so chapter 7 in the book is going to talk about recursion. It's going to give you lots of uh, important information. And down on about page 436, it's going to actually go through a case study of finding a path through the maze. So this is going to be really helpful for you. And uh, so uh, here it's talking about the exact problem you need to do. Namely, you're going to create a data structure. In this case, they're going to create a two-dimensional array 
you are going to create a three-dimensional ray. You should see that there's an analogy here that you can hopefully use to your benefit. Okay? Um, so anyway, you can notice here's a path through from one corner to the next. And uh, here's the recursive algorithm. If the current cells outside the maze return false, else if it, if it is part of a barrier or has already been visited, return false. So those are the base cases, right, for your recursion. Otherwise, if the current cell is in the maze, uh, let's see. Otherwise, try to find a path from the current place to the, to the exit. Okay, so here's the three base cases. If you're outside the maze, if you're part of a barrier, or you are being visited, and if you're at the exit, obviously you return true. Otherwise, you're going to try to find a path to the exit. So we're now going to uh, go through, mark the current cell as a path by recoloring it to the path color. In this case, we're going to have zeros and ones, and so we'll recolor places we visited with twos. And I would suggest you make a copy of the whole um, uh, three-dimensional array before you start doing this, because you're going to have twos all over and it's going to be all messed up. And at the end, you're going to want to go back to the original. So keep a, a copy of the original, and then um, you're going to remark things in your copy. So for each neighbor of the current cell, and in this example, we are going to be looking at north, south, east, and west because we're just doing a two-dimensional implementation, but you're going to also have to look up and down. Okay, But boy, if you understand what's going on with this example in the book, it's going to really help you. Okay, if there's uh, <coughs> we haven't had any stop stopping case, then we're going to actually end up calling ourself this same recursive function and he will go ahead until eventually we return one of the base cases. Okay? Okay, so the, here's a whole bunch of uh, information. I encourage you to read this. Um, but uh, the, the nice thing is we're going to actually include some source code here. Here's maze.cpp. Notice he's going to have some different colors. Um, and he's going to specify, in this case, a 5x5 five five array. And then um, here's this find maze path. And this is going to be the recursive function. And so he will uh, uh, end up calling himself. That's what a recursive function is. Turns out recursive functions are really effective for a lot of things. Uh, doing searches, everything's going to be recursive. Doing sorting, you've got to use recursion. Uh, traversing trees, you must use uh, recursion. If you try to do anything else, you're just going to be frustrated. So we're trying to give you an opportunity here to uh, go ahead and notice what's going to happen inside of this find maze path. So first we're going to do the things we talked about. Are we outside the bounds of the array by this thing? Have we, is it a, a uh, non-traversable traversable place? We'll return false. Otherwise, if we're at the end, the exit, then we return true because it was a, uh, it's the way out. Okay, else, here's the recursive case. Notice we've got find maze path, so we're going to recursively call ourselves with a slightly different grid, right? In this case, we'll either look at the previous row, the next row, the previous column, or the next column. And then we'll do the same set of looking for base cases if we're doing that, okay? So this, is, this code is going to be almost identical to the code you will need to use except you're going to do it in three dimensions instead of just two dimensions. So pay a lot of attention to this. Okay, uh, They're going to give you some uh, in, uh, other information here. Uh, so go through this very carefully and make sure you understand it. Um, here we're going to say, OK, let's, build, let's figure out how to test your code. Now, one thing I've noticed is you guys don't really <laughs> 
do a lot of testing. Most of your testing is with the pass off code, which is a really bad idea. So you should test your code with your own test jig, with your own test code that you've written before you ever try the, uh, the full code. So I'm going to really encourage you to do that. Okay? Um, so uh, that's kind of the stuff from the book. Again, the, the thing about this class, almost all of the code is in the book. Your job is to figure out how it works and to adapt it to the particular assignment that you're given. Okay? So here is um, the Pathfinder interface that you need to do. And so we're going to need to have some more files here. So we can create a new file called uh, pathfinder.h. We'll need that. And we'll also need a uh, pathfinder.cpp. Okay, those would all be really good things to have. But maybe you're still not sure how to do these things. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about some resources that you ought to be able to use. Okay, so along with this, uh, the lab description, if you take a look at the uh, unit on recursion, you will notice that we've tried to give you quite a bit of help. Okay, so. The first one is that hopefully you did this Boggle assignment. Notice that the Boggle assignment is almost exactly the same, except it's doing two dimensions. Uh, we've also given you this recursive maze exploration uh, assignment. And what this is basically going to do you is have you reframe the code from the book into a um, into something that looks more like the lab. Okay, so I think I'm about out of time, but I'm just going to encourage you to now take this recursive main maze exploration and work through this to create a two dimensional maze to go ahead and. Um, create a two-dimensional array that will be able to read these values in and put them into your code. And, and uh, again, you're going to write your own main.cpp. Hopefully that is very simple. It's not going to be the pass-off code, but it's just going to create a new Pathfinder object. That's the one you're going to write. It will then import the maze and then solve it. Okay, so that's the, the important things. You don't want to try to do this with the pass off code. You want to go ahead and test it with your own code, which is going to be very simple. Okay, so I am going to kind of stop at this point and encourage you to move forward and uh, try to use this recursive maze exploration example to develop code that will work for two dimensions. And then you can change it in a fairly small way to actually have it work in three dimensions. Notice this is really the same code that we got out of the book. So all I'm doing in this uh, uh, example is let's give you some clues on how to turn something into a string so you can print it out. Here's how to import the maze from the file. And uh, so everything else should be pretty straightforward once you give this working to then get it to work with the, uh, the lab code. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys work on this. And hopefully that gave you some ideas on how to, uh, what I would do is then take this, uh, this code that we've developed here and fill in the functions that you have in your Pathfinder. You've got Pathfinder to string, and then here you've got a find maze path and if you look at the stuff you've got to do in here, uh, first of all, you need to do two string. Oh, we just did that in two dimensions. You should be able to convert that easily to three dimensions. You're going to have to create a random maze. Oh, well, that's a little bit uh, tricky, but you're kind of getting good at random numbers. And really, all you have to do is fill it up with some kind of a uh, random thing. Import maze. Ah, we've already done that in two dimensions. 
It should be easy for you to do in three dimensions. And finally, here's Solve Maze, which is the, uh, the piece that we just talked about uh, generating here with Find Maze Path. So I guess what I'm trying to do is make it really easy for you to find the things that you need to be successful in this lab and uh, try to remove any of the um, busy work so you can get right to really understanding what's going on here. Now it may, may feel like, man, you've given us almost all of the code. That's true, but uh, the understanding it takes to adapt this from two-dimensional into three-dimensional uh, if you don't know what you're doing, it's going to be really hard to do that. So make sure you understand the code, and then you should be able to adapt it fairly easily. And uh, that's all for this tutorial, and we'll talk to you later.